Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. Ow, uh, I just hit off my nail, so I had an incident with my nail and I had literally, see this fake nail here? I had this nail on and then this one came off with half of my nail, so very sore. But anyway, wasn't expecting to get into that straight away. Um, I hope you're having a great day and welcome back to my channel. Also, my hair is wet, so I kind of just wanted to leave it down so it could dry. But for today's video, I'm going to be talking about my social anxiety story and giving an update on it because I've never really made a full video about my social anxiety. I have made a video um, about my mental health in general, which I suppose is about my social anxiety, but I just wanted to dedicate a whole video to that to kind of just make it more clear, if that makes sense. If, does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. But I hope I won't be repeating myself from the mental health video, but that was quite a while ago anyway. So yeah, I hope you're all keeping well. If you like to see, would like to see more of my videos, please do subscribe and give a thumbs up because it really does help if you want. And yeah, let's just get right into the video. So I've kind of talked about my backstory with social anxiety, but I think I'll just go briefly through it again. And for those of you who don't know what social anxiety is, I'm just going to pull up a definition just to be so I can make sense like in my head it's something that I don't want like my definition might not be might not make sense so just give me a sec so I'm just googling the definition now so according to um NIMH social anxiety disorder more than just shyness <clears throat> social anxiety disorder also called social phobia is a mental health condition it is an intense persistent fear of being watched and judged by others this fear can affect work, school, and your day-to-day -day activities. It can make it more. It can make it hard to make. I don't know why. When I talk about anxiety, my own anxiety gets bad. Like I, my breath gets very short and stuff. So just ignore that. It can make it hard to make and keep friends. So that's just the definition there, and I do agree with that definition as well. Like for me, I went through social anxiety from the age of fourteen. I'm still going through it, but not as badly. So 14, so my bad, like when it was bad, was from 14 to, I'm gonna say 20. 14 to 20, just as like, when I was still turned 20, it was quite bad. So I'm 21 now and it has gotten a lot better. But when I was 14, I started noticing that I would get incredibly anxious going places. Um, it would be like just before I'd leave to go somewhere, I'd get a panic attack. Um, whether it be a restaurant, whether it be school or just anything and it was literally so bad um, that I didn't want to leave the house a lot of the time um, it, like it got particularly bad in places with a lot of people so for example the the if I was going into town to do some shopping or to meet a friend or to go to the cinema etc like little thing like that was just such a big deal and it was so hard to do like I would get so anxious just before it um I would literally like sometimes I cancelled going because I just felt so so anxious and then I would just the whole time I was there it was like I felt so numb and like tingly it was like the anxiety was just like prickling at me and it was like I just felt so uncomfortable and like a lot of the times I like spaced out so I'd be like looking around like just spacing out and just thinking like oh this person's looking at me and oh I look so ugly and oh I just shouldn't be here blah 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 just thinking all of those horrible things and it wasn't like it was just annoying um because it made going places hard and then when I did have a panic attack it was like my brain associated that place with a panic attack so even coming past that pace place I would start to get a panic attack so an example of this would be when I started getting a job Um, I started my first job and then there was a certain sorry I'm going to turn this on mute um sorry uh, but there was a certain place that just like as we were coming through the road that I saw my workplace it was like a turn and I, it was still a good bit away but I could see it and I was like oh shit <laughs> like my whole anxiety started getting really really bad and it was always at that one point and another example of this was for example, like I said earlier, that I associated town and a busy place with anxiety. It would be like, if we were going into town to do shopping, this one place that we would be passing in the car on the way to get there, I would just have a full-blown panic attack. 
um, and it would be horrible and I, like I told you I do get anxious when I speak about it because it's just I don't know why like I just get so so like um, like short of breath and stuff but it was it was just horrible and school for me was horrible with um, and social anxiety because I like I mentioned in my last video I was bullied in school and that definitely made my social anxiety worse because one of the factors of social anxiety or the key parts of it is that you do not want to be the centre of attention, you don't want people's attention towards you and the fact that it was also in a negative way made my anxiety so bad. Sorry I just tied up my hair there because it was just starting to get annoying and I just didn't like how it looked. It doesn't look great now but just it's out of my face and that's helpful. Um, so yeah, school definitely made it worse, like I did experience it when I was 14. Um, which is when I started experiencing the bullying and I just remember obviously like the fact that people were acknowledging me publicly and they publicly humiliated me as well didn't do great things for it like I literally remember crying in the bathroom and having these horrible horrible panic attacks and it was just horrible and I didn't want to go to school and a lot of the time I felt my anxiety made me feel physically sick, like I would feel physically sick and there was times I actually got sick from it. Um, it I'd get cramps in my stomach, just dizzy and faint and all of that and I tried to go home a lot of the time and I just couldn't deal with it and it was so 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 draining um, and it was almost then like I couldn't sleep because I was just thinking about the embarrassing moment. And it was just this endless, endless cycle of it. And other things I noticed in school was that I got like... So this is going to sound a bit weird. So basically, I have a weird walk. The way I walk is quite weird. I don't know, I also have dyspraxia, so that's kind of comes into play with that. But I have a weird walk and I noticed that when I was walking past a certain group of people, obviously in school, you know how people hang out in groups or whatever, I would just feel like all of their eyes were looking at me and looking at the way I walked. I just became so incredibly self-conscious of my body and I was like I couldn't control my legs like I just and I felt like they were doing this really weird thing and that everyone was just staring at me. Um, also as well I started noticing in class that when a teacher would ask me a question I literally sometimes couldn't speak. I would become so so nervous and my whole body would like I could just sense like the whole class I'd be anxious anyway anticipating a question because you know how some classes some teachers ask more questions than others and you're just anticipating that and um, I'll get into detail about one class in a minute but I was literally so when it comes to them asking me a question and it was a I was really really bad at school like my academic side was so bad I used to get so anxious because a I knew I wouldn't get the chance of me getting the answer wrong was about 90% just that it was that sometimes I physically couldn't get the words out so I literally I would literally do like a brain fog moment it'd be literally like I could I just couldn't think of the answer like um like I or even like if I did know it I just couldn't remember it and I just it was horrible so my whole anxiety would go up and I would be like uh 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 and then sometimes getting the words out my speech would go quite weird so those are things that I started noticing I also noticed that I, when it came to like, again, public speaking, whether it be in class or whether it be in general, like if we're at a table, even just in, if it was in school or if it was someone asked me a question in front of others, I did do the exact same thing. I started having like a brain fog and I started slurring my words because I was so, so nervous and I started getting anxious and the heavy breathing started. So at that point I did know there was something wrong and I just thought it was me being shy. So physical signs and symptoms can sometimes accompany social anxiety disorder and may include blushing, fast heartbeat, trembling, sweating, upset stomach or nausea, trouble catching your breath, dizziness or lightheadedness, feeling your mind has gone blank. Those are literally all of the symptoms I experienced. So in a moment where my anxiety was bad, I would literally experience all of those. So when I was, those were the physical symptoms that I experienced. Like, it would be like just if I was being asked a question, like I said, those are literally all of the um, symptoms I experienced. And then there's emotional and behavioural symptoms. So fear of situations in which you may be judged. That was definitely one of the the strongest things that I had, the fear of being judged. Like, it could be anything, like, 
like for example we go back to the class situation it was a fear of my answer being wrong and everyone thinking I was thick worrying about embarrassing or humiliating yourself literally this as well so this is why it made the bullying in school really hard as well because when I was being humiliated by other people um it did make my social anxiety really bad because I was being embarrassed I was being humiliated but there was actually nothing I could do about it and it made it so much worse Fear that others will notice you look anxious. This is a massive one. Like, I try to, like, play it off. Uh, th there's not, like I just said, the physical symptoms of it. There's not a lot of ways you can play off anxiety. If you're shaking, if you're trembling, if your voice is shaking. There's not a lot of ways you can do that. And when people will say, are you okay? You're so nervous. That made it so much worse because I was like, fuck, people can actually see. Avoiding doing things or speaking to people out of fear of embarrassment. So I actually have an example of this. When I was in first year, I did after school study and there was a sixth year boy or a fifth year boy and we had iPads and he was talking to me about my iPad and so bearing in mind study was a really really quiet environment, you weren't supposed to talk. So I was sitting right here and he was sitting just a bit in front of me and he turned around and kind of like asked me like, oh my god you're using iPads, how do you find that? And I was like, like he asked me and everyone was looking at me and I was like, I just didn't say anything. I wanted, like I didn't want to be rude, but I just couldn't say, oh it's grand. Like I just kind of smiled at him and was like, uh, I, I just couldn't say it to him. And I, I think I spoke to him after about it, but that was it. It was the fear of speaking out loud and then the fear of getting in trouble and then being embarrassed, if that made sense. Um, avoid situations where you might be the centre of attention. This is massive as well. I, the fear of being the centre of attention when you have social anxiety is so, so high. Like, you do not want to be anyone's centre of attention. A group of people, like, looking at you or focusing on you is horrible and I did try and avoid that a lot of times. Some examples even for that, I was quite bad in family situations as well. Like, at Christmas time, I found Christmas really hard because, you know, when, like, family are over and they're asking you questions about yourself, I found that really hard. Having anxiety in anticipation of a feared activity or event. So, sometimes, I remember, this the thing that, like, stands out to me the most. On a Sunday night, just before school, at around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, just before I'd go to bed, I remember getting such a big panic attack all the time because I did not want to go to school. Like, I hated school. Um, my anxiety was bad, I was being bullied, it wasn't great and I was shit at school. So I hated it and I just remember having a panic attack before and having a panic attack in the morning just in the dread of going to school. That was horrible as well. Expecting the worst possible consequences from a negative experience during a social situation. Yeah, like with anxiety you definitely expect the worst um, just out of anything. Um, there's a lot of things that I put off with it, like for example when, let's say in class, I needed to go to the toilet. I would rather sit there uncomfortably, like really uncomfortably, than ask to go to the toilet. Because why? Because if I put up my hand and ask to go to the toilet, everybody's looking at me, or so my brain thinks. Actually, in reality, no one cares. But anyway, everyone's looking at me, the teacher's looking at me, and what if they say no? What if they say no and I'm embarrassed? What if they say no and I really gotta go? Then it's just embarrassing. So a lot of the times I just held it in. Now towards my time in secondary school, I actually did um, get better at that because I was like, look, it's my bladder. Like, and I just think teachers saying no is just horrible. Um, it's horrible. Like they don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, it was horrible. So it was the fear of the worst happening and the fear of getting in trouble as well. Um, also another huge thing for me was not being able to open doors. So. I don't know if this is just me who has anxiety, but there was times like I would let other people walk in front of me to open the door in case I opened the door wrong. Like I was so afraid of opening the door wrong and people would be like, oh my god, you can't open the door. And when I say it out loud, it sounds so, so small, but it, it just was a huge thing for me as well. So a lot of the times, even that kind of made the school part hard, like when I needed to go to the toilet because I was afraid of opening the door wrong. And I know that sounds so small, but it was so big for me. Um, so yeah, that was basically... I was going through all of this and I remember telling somebody about this at the time when I was 14 years old saying I think I might have anxiety because I watched Zoe Sugg's video about anxiety. She was the very first, actually, and Monica Graham's video as well. They were the two very first videos I'd seen on social anxiety and they helped so much because I related to every single thing they said. I will link those videos below because they are so, so helpful if you want to watch them. 
um, I link related to everything and I remember telling somebody at the time and this person was like you don't have anxiety would you shut up you're making such a big deal about it you're literally so confident you're so this you don't have anxiety and this was somebody like my own age and I just remember feeling so deflated after that because I was like mm, maybe maybe this person's right maybe I don't have anxiety but it made me feel so hurt because I had just reached out to somebody and then that's what they said and it was just horrible um and yeah so like that's kind of like just like I did find out I have anxiety through YouTube because YouTube is was a lifesaver for me with getting through it and stuff and like I a massive coping mechanism I had for my bad days was watching YouTube like I watched I discovered Zoe Soak's channel when I was like 14 or 13 one of those ages and I literally binged all of her videos and um, I binged her blog posts because that's what helped me like if I had a bad day at school or if I was anxious I would just watch her videos and she really really helped that's why I have so much love for her because she helped me through such a such a dark time and she doesn't even know who I am so yeah that's that's that like just that really helped so that's just a bit of a story about my anxiety the symptoms I experienced and how it kind of pay, played a role in my life but then how I kind of got through it. So I noticed a lot as the older I got, the better it got. And I don't know whether that was because I was becoming more mature or I was doing more things to kind of combat it. Um, in school, it wasn't great. Um, like I just said, pretty much it only started getting better in fifth year, towards the end of fifth year. Up until first year to the start of fifth year, mine's idea was shit. So that was five years and it was hell. It was actually horrible. Then at the end of fifth year, it actually it kind of changed in TY. TY was the turning point for my anxiety. It just gradually got better. So I, maybe it was TY, um, but it was still bad, but it got better because I was getting that m more independence. But then in fifth year, fifth year was when I really, really noticed the difference. Um, and yeah. And then I just found that when I was in sixth year as well then, I wasn't as socially anxious as I was before because I felt, obviously being a sixth year, you're the oldest in the school and I just felt like nobody can hurt me if I don't want them to, except teachers, which they did, but that's besides the point, <laughs> some of them. Um, nobody can hurt me if I don't want them to and I was getting picked on by younger years and it, it did get to me, like it hurt so bad, but it didn't get to me as much as the other years because I was like, well, in my mind I just kind of rose above it and I was like, oh, well, they're obviously sad with their life, etc. And I just remember getting more confident and I wasn't as socially anxious. I was fine in situations. I would get a hint of anxiety sometimes, but it wouldn't be too bad. I was more so stressed about the leaving cert. Then when I went to college, so I did a level five last year, in Limerick. I moved to Limerick for the year and I loved it and I was challenging myself more and more. It was like I went to the gym, I made myself go to the gym. I was terrified but I did it. I made myself go get the bus on my own, be in town on my own, sit in a restaurant on my own and those may sound like very 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 small things but for someone with social anxiety it's almost impossible. One of the things I still haven't managed to do is get a train on my own. Trains give me so much anxiety. But I can get a bus on my own, just not a train yet. <laughs> um, but I'm working on that. So th that's why I started noticing. By pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, you're going to get the furthest. You're going to push yourself more to go out of the little like bubble you have yourself in. And it helps so much. And the first couple of times you do it, you will be so anxious. I remember the first few times I got a bus on my own, the whole bus journey, I would be shaking and I would be anxious. And it was horrible, but when I got home into my own bed, I was like, I did that. I did that all on my own and I can do it again. So it's literally just pushing yourself. And that's the biggest advice I have. And I know it's going to be so hard, but you just have to do it. And that's how I found myself getting better with anxiety. That's the biggest, biggest thing. Another thing that I found that really, really helped was talking about it. If you're anxious, say it. And a lot of the time I just bottled it up and I never said anything and I really wish I did because if I go back to school there were certain teachers I this one teacher in particular who scared the living daylights out of me I'm going to be honest with you this person scared me um I wasn't great at this subject either but in I'm nearly giving pronouns here in this person's class I hated it I dreaded it I would literally have a panic attack the whole class and I had this class every every day 
um, I just hated it. Like, I just hated it. And I had this class for about four years as well. So it was really, really scary. This person scared me and it, this person triggered my anxiety. And I just wish I went up and I told this person how I was feeling, how I felt in this class instead of bottling it all up. Because at the end of the day, if I've told this person how I felt, they might have listened. They might have said, oh, like, you know, may have changed the style of teaching or whatever. This class was just hell and I'm not exaggerating, trust me. So, yeah, I just wish I told this person because that class, it drained me. Like, I remember sometimes I went home right before it because I physically couldn't handle it. Um, and, yeah, so I just wish I told because... If you say something, at least you've said it. And I find, find that was really helpful. When I went into college, I told one of my lecturers that I had anxiety and that public presentations made me very nervous. And I was very, very honest about it. But instead of like not letting me do it or like getting me out of it, she pushed me in the right direction and was like, look, you, you can do this. You can do anything that comes your way, but just practice, practice, practice. So the thought of someone with social anxiety doing a public presentation is horrible like it's just no one wants to do it in general but when you've got social anxiety it's really really hard and I found after the first two I did I felt like I could do any like obviously I'd be nervous but I felt like I could do any and it's literally I found that by pushing myself out of my comfort zone and talking about it that it really helped it just helped me get through it as well like I just think also praising how far that you've come is so important as well like when you see change in the way you've done things or when you do little little things that may are little in the grand scheme of things that are big towards you you should praise yourself and give yourself an award i remember the very first time i ate lunch i had i sat by myself for lunch or whatever was when i was going to a lucy fitz event so lucy fitz came to ennis and with Rochford's pharmacy and I decided to go. Now there wasn't anyone to go with me, the people I'd asked weren't able to come. So that was fine, I went on my own. I got the bus on my own, I stayed in town on my own, I went to that event on my own. I talked to Lucy, she was lovely. And then I remember going to Supermax afterwards on my own and just eating, just chilling. Um, and I was really, really proud of myself and I got the bus on my own then that evening. So I was really proud of myself and it's just about acknowledging those little wins as well. So that's kind of like my whole social anxiety story basically and an update. Like as of right now, social anxiety doesn't affect me as much on a day to day basis. There are times I'll still get anxious. Um, sometimes even when I go up to pay for something, I still get anxious. And that was something I usually had to ask other people to do. I'd give them the money and be like, hey, can you pay for this? Because I just would be physically so nervous. Sometimes I still get anxious in shops and queues or if I see a couple of people in town, like, um, I will be like, oh, like I get really anxious and stuff. On buses, I still get anxious. It's still a work in progress, but honestly, I've come so far. And I do think um, YouTube has really helped me come so far as well, because I feel like by talking to you guys and editing and putting myself out there, it has helped so much. Um, and I just think the sky's the limit at this rate. Like, and I, like, I like I just I have come so far and I need to acknowledge that and um, my advice to anyone who has social anxiety at the minute if you're watching this I just want to say first off you're not alone you're never ever ever alone because social anxiety can make you feel like you're alone I remember coming back from certain events and literally sitting on my bed and thinking why am I so fucked up why am I so fucked up why is this happening to me I'm so weird no one likes me and I felt so weird and just so horrible. And I did that every time I came back from an event or whatever it was, even school. And I just asked myself that question. And then I started, when I watched Zoe's video, I started to realize this doesn't, this isn't just happening to me. This is happening to a lot of people. And when I had that acknowledgement that I wasn't alone, it made me feel like I could do anything and that I was, I was, we were in this together. So that's my first piece of advice is you're not alone. You're not weird. This happens to so many people. It's just not talked about a lot. Um, and my advice is to li gradually push your way, um, through your boundaries. To push your way out of 
the tight fold you have yourself in and do little things. I'm talking tiny things, whether it is going out for a walk on your own, getting a bus on your own, which is a big thing, but gradually, or even just talking, ringing somebody first, those little things, huge, they will, like I'm telling you right now, just do those little things and you will get to bigger things, I promise. My t it will take time, it took me five years, which is like a lot of time. It took me five years, but now I'm so happy and I'm so confident in where I am. And that I just think is so, so, so important. Um, also my advice is to tell people, but not to give up if they say something negative about it. I had um, an incident where I had a panic attack somewhere and I fainted because of the panic attack because I was around a certain person that made me nervous and stuff in a work experience environment. I had a panic attack and I fainted and I told someone about it and they completely shut me down and said, oh it's all in your head, you're just exaggerating, like you'll get over it, it's just a phase, blah 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 and they didn't listen to me and that completely tore me down because I was going through so so much and to have the bravery and courage to say it to somebody to be shut down is the worst feeling. But I'm just telling you right now, if they don't, sorry, I'm just a bit uncomfortable. If they don't listen to you, they're not the la they're not the last person you can talk to. You can talk to anybody, whether it's a friend, whether it's a teacher you trust, or whether it's just anybody to talk about it. Because your feelings are, like your feelings are, what's the word? Valid. The way you're feeling is valid and you can't change the way you feel. That's how you feel. So don't give up there. Um... Also, what I used to do is I used to message Childline um, when I was feeling extremely anxious. Childline is a great, great um, organisation and if you are under the age of 18, you can definitely message them. I message them a lot of the time during my panic attacks and anxiety. They were extremely helpful. Um, you can reach out to loads of other organisations as well. As Just know that you're not alone and you can get through this. I think a lot has to be done with schools and with anxiety and stuff and just with all mental health um, things that people are going through. So much more needs to be done as not a lot is being done at the minute. Um, and we just need to talk about it, just have an open honest conversation. And I used to think I'd never be able to make a video like this. If you saw my mental health video, I was so uncomfortable and nervous in that video because I was scared. I was scared to talk about it in case anybody was like oh she's so weird like she's struggling with this like and I, there's just still there's a stigma there and that's what I felt was there um and I just was scared whereas now I just accept the way that this is how I felt this is how five years of my life were if not six like I still struggle and I accept that and I'm talking about it on an open on an open platform just to help you guys if you're going through the same thing because I know it can be a, such a scary place when you're going through something and you feel like you don't have anybody who knows what you're going through. So I'm going to leave this video at that because I don't want it to be too long but I hope this helped and if you have any questions please let me know. Um, I kind of went a little all over the place with this which I'm really sorry about. Um, I hope it's okay. I just didn't make notes because I just wanted it to be completely fluid without me checking notes and stuff. I. Maybe I should have made notes, it would have been more clear. But if you have any questions, like I said, please leave them below. And as long as, just take from this, one, you're not alone, and two, you're strong. And three, to talk when you need to. Because just don't bottle it up, it's not good. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. If this helps, please let me know. If you want to message me about anything, always, 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 DMs are open. Social medias are linked down below. And if you want me to make another video about social anxiety, please let me know as well. Or anything, just let me know. And I hope you have a great day and a great week. Um, and I should see you guys very soon. Thank you so much. Give a thumbs up if you want. And yeah.